Good afternoon on today's Angry Bulletin. There appears to be a huge disconnect between Boeing and NASA right now because although Administrator Nelson has made it very clear that the best way to save money in the future is only to engage contractors in fixed price contracts, and that by the way is also the way to keep the cost of SLS down in the future, Boeing has made it very clear that given the enormous amount of money they've lost on Starliner, they're not going to be doing any more fixed price contracts. And yet, neither agency seems to be acknowledging that there's a problem here, maybe because they really don't care about taxpayer money as much as they say they do. All of this and more coming at you on The Angry Astronaut right now. Good afternoon, and once again, welcome to The Angry Astronaut. Got my sunglasses back today because I'm just going to be rude and obnoxious in this particular episode because, let's be honest, Boeing really deserves it. Oh yeah, and also I've added on my Remembrance Day pin, um, <laughs> although some of you may think that I'm just doing that in order to try to fit in here in Britain. Actually, my grandfather served in the Great War, the First World War, when he came over here in 1917 to fight alongside the British and the French against the Germans. And uh, quite, uh, quite an interesting experience for him and actually sort of a series of miracles that allowed him to survive that war that took the lives of so many of his friends. But I'll get into that whole story in a different episode. In the meantime, we need to talk about Boeing. So, as some of you may know, NASA's big plan to try to make contracts more affordable, make these whole projects more successful in the future, especially if we're talking about SLS and the future of Artemis, well, one of their ideas is to make sure that future contracts with any contractor, not just Boeing, get set down in what's called a fixed price contract and not a cost plus contract. Cost plus contracts are essentially... Well, the idea is we uh, roughly this is what we want to charge or roughly this is what we want to spend on this project. But, you know, everybody knows that it's going to be a hell of a lot more expensive than that. So just let us know how much more money you need year after year and we'll just go ahead and give it to you. That's the way Boeing has been accustomed to doing business. However, as far as Starliner is concerned, well, Starliner was a fixed price contract. And even though Boeing got more money, Money than SpaceX did for the commercial crew program, well, they have lost over a billion dollars on this project and they still haven't taken a single human being to orbit. And so, in a recent shareholders meeting, Boeing made it very clear that even though commitments have been made for fixed price contracts to bring down the price of Artemis, well, there's no way in hell they're going to be doing that anymore. Three. And lift off. Starliner is headed back to space on the shoulders of Atlas, powered by a workforce dedicated to its success. Software errors that put the ship into the wrong orbit. Timing errors that almost led to the service module crashing into the crew module. 84 corrective actions. The ship was almost lost twice. Valve problems. And all of that happened before OFT2 in May of 2022. Yeah, at this point, it's been 17 months since the second unmanned flight test of Boeing Starliner, a flight that it was obvious had serious problems from the get-go, from the moment that the ship was trying to dock with the International Space Station, it became very clear that there were problems. For 24 hours, NASA didn't even respond to any inquiries from the press, and Starliner hung off the ISS for a considerable amount of time before it was finally able to dock. Clearly there were problems, however NASA and Boeing denied that any serious problems really existed. It was only months later, and by the way, after they had already scheduled Starliner to take human beings into orbit, that further admissions became public. 
The wiring could catch fire. There were problems with the parachute system. The problems went on and on. And this is on a spacecraft that received over a billion dollars more funding than SpaceX got for Crew Dragon, which has now been in operation for years and taken people to orbit not only on NASA flights, but on several private space flights as well. And as the name suggests, fixed price contracts mean that if the contract ends up costing a lot more than you anticipated, the company takes the hit, not the taxpayers, not NASA. And this is something that has been devastating to Boeing as of late. Starliner has lost over a billion dollars, and that all comes out out of the Defense, Space, and Security Division. And those losses are expected to increase given the fact that they remain in charge of the whole SLS program. And as we all know, the NASA Office of Inspector General has been very clear that fixed price contracts are the solution to keeping SLS costs down in the future so that Artemis has a snowball's chance in hell of not being canceled. However, Boeing doesn't seem to be seeing eye to eye with NASA on this issue, and nobody seems to be talking about that. Ted Colbert, president and CEO of Boeing Defense Space and Security, had this to say, quote, there was recognition that doing big fixed price development programs on very, very complex capabilities or capabilities that require a lot of maturity from either an engineering or manufacturing perspective perspective can be very, very challenging. And so we are working very hard with the acquisition community and the Pentagon to be smart about every next program that we have together. But in a recent conference call with analysts, Boeing's chief financial officer, Brian West, was a lot more particular about fixed price contracts. Quote, perhaps most importantly, we instituted much tighter underwriting standards. As you know, part of the challenge we're dealing with are legacy contracts that we need to get out from under, legacy contracts being fixed price contracts. Rest assured, we haven't signed any fixed price development contracts, nor intend to. These moves are all fundamental to accelerating recovery by the 2025 to 26 time frame. Once again, a huge disconnect here because NASA and the Office of Inspector General has been very clear that they intend to bring SLS costs down and therefore Artemis costs down by quote, employing ongoing affordability initiatives by reducing workforce, increasing efficiencies with manufacturing process and using fixed price contracts. However, the NASA Office of Inspector General in a recent report correctly identified that there was a serious problem with this plan. Quote, there is no commitment from DST to agree to a fixed price contract that would help lock in savings. Well, that's not surprising given the fact that Boeing has publicly announced that they aren't going to be signing any fixed price contracts. So how the hell are they supposed to keep the cost for SLS under control, especially given the fact that there's no competition with Boeing whatsoever, and they are the ones managing cost control. It's absolutely ridiculous, and it's happened before. There's a case study in the NASA OIG report where space shuttle production costs and risks were transferred to a commercial services contract. Quote, as a result of the transfer of shuttle production and operations responsibilities from NASA managed contracts to a commercial services contract, we estimate that space shuttle operations costs increased approximately 38% to $1.45 billion per launch. Boy, those were the good old days, huh? In 1996, after two decades of NASA-led development and operations, STS was transferred to a commercial services contract. The Shuttle Flight Operations contract awarded on a sole source basis to United Space Alliance, a joint venture between Boeing and the Lockheed Martin Corporation. Does that sound kind of familiar? 
SDS held the distinction of being NASA's largest budgeted program, and like the SLS, NASA recognized the imperative to reduce STS costs. However, the program proved more costly than when operations were controlled by NASA. I mean, what NASA is essentially planning to do here, again by the way, is to unleash the fox in the hen house. There is no independent company that is overseeing Boeing's operations or Boeing's control of the SLS program, just like what happened with the space shuttle back in the 1990s. And just like the space shuttle, this is projected to put SLS even further over budget rather than reducing contract costs. And if you don't put fixed price contracts into place, well, that practically guarantees that there aren't going to be any savings anytime soon. So what's the solution? Well, to dump Boeing, obviously, and go exclusively with another provider, namely SpaceX and Starship. Unfortunately, Starship has yet to prove itself as being an effective way of transporting human beings to the moon. We still don't know for certain if all of the new infrastructure that's going to have to be put into place with Starship is really going to solve all of our problems. We'd like to think that it's going to, and SpaceX's track record suggests that it's going to, but we really don't know for certain until the whole thing gets put into practice, and Starship has yet to even go into orbit. In the meantime, NASA really needs to readdress this situation with Boeing, given the fact that Boeing has been so public about the issue anyway. And if Boeing says that they can't make a profit on fixed price contracts, well, then they should do business with somebody who has tons of money to throw away because NASA definitely does not. SpaceX was able to pull a very substantial profit on Crew Dragon and with substantially less money to start off with. And if Boeing really wants to compete with the likes of SpaceX, they really need to take a long, hard look at how they're doing things rather than blaming their problems on things like fixed price contracts. I'd like to thank my new Patreon members, Julian Richards, Kill Raven, TT and Jin, I believe I pronounced that right, and finally Roy Bird. Thank you so much for supporting this channel and my efforts to get to these upcoming launches, Starship OFT2 and Vulcan Centaur. Your generous support will make all of this possible, along with other trips I'd like to take to cover spaceflight more thoroughly. And for the rest of you, again, please like, Please subscribe. Once again, thank you very much for watching. And as always, stay angry about space.